I'm getting rid of some empties today. Okay, we're going. So when you drink your beers in Canada, or this region of Canada anyway, and you're driving without your seatbelt, your car will tell you. When you buy beers in Canada, what they do, well, in this region of Canada, what they do is you, you pay a deposit on your cans. Uh, sort of holding a couple of cents hostage uh, for every can of beer that you drink. So then uh, what they expect you to do is take those cans and bring them back to a center where you can recycle them. So instead of putting your cans in here, you've got to keep track of them, keep them neat, and bring them back. <laughs> So that's exactly what I'm doing today. Fun stuff. All set, let's get a move on. Okay, let's go. Okay, again, so the way it works is they hold on to 10 cents for every can that you you buy, and that's that's only alcohol beverage cans. Their soda cans, they hold on to five cents. And then when you bring it back to a place that will exchange them, you get your money back. But not, a, not in all cases, you don't get all your money back. Um, a lot of these places are like a, a business, right? So they collect the cans and then they get them back with the 10 cents. So they give you eight cents and they keep two cents from every can. So you end up losing out on two cents of, uh, of your deposit when you, when you bring your cans back. If you kept on top of it, you can bring it back to the same place where you buy your beer and they'll accept it and give you back your full 10 cents per can. Um, but they won't take more than 24 cans or something like that. They don't, you can't go in with a whole bunch. Say you're getting some beer on your way home from work, you, you have to think ahead of time, put your empties in the car on the way to work so that when you get to the place on your way home from work, uh, you can bring your empties in. So most people just do it this way. They have a ton of cans and then they bring them all back at the same time and then get a little bit of spending money, maybe to go buy some more beer. Yeah, so today I'm, I'm not in the, uh, I'm not in the Jeep. The Jeep's currently not on the road because of a uh, pooched fuel pump. So the, <laughs> yeah, the Jeep's not running currently. But I did, uh, when I parted out that Grand Cherokee to get the engine out of it, I took a number of other parts as well. I took many parts from that. I took the engine transmission, transfer case, but I also took the fuel tank and I'm gonna see if it'll fit in the XJ. It's a different tank. Uh, if you guys have ever changed the tank or have ever taken out a tank on an XJ, the uh, the sender units at the front of the tank on, on an angle. Um, the Grand Cherokee tank that I have is uh, for one, a plastic tank, which I, I think might be a little bit better because of the uh, the conditions around here, we get a lot of road salt. Um, they put salt and sometimes even like a liquid salt down on the highways and that gets everywhere. And on those metal tanks, it'll actually get up and on the top of the tank and it'll rot, rot the tank out from there. And it's really hard to, to get in there with a spray nozzle or anything. So having the plastic tank will be a benefit, but the sender on those tanks are actually on the very top. Um, so what I what I plan on doing is if it fits in the XJ, I'd like to uh, make uh, an access panel for the for the fuel pump sending unit because you never know if down the road it will go out too. Because I don't know how old the pump is in the tank uh, from the Grand Cherokee. So. I will be putting, or at least attempting to put that tank in the XJ. So um, that will be an episode on the main channel that I'm gonna be putting together, but that's not gonna be a definite DIY repair. It'll be, uh, does this work? 
and I guess we'll find out when I attempt it. So currently I'm pulling into the facility where I, how's a friend say hi? Where I can return my cans. So, uh, yeah, I'll be pulling up and putting, assembling all my cans together in order to get a couple of bucks back. Here we go. Cheers, bud. Have a good day. Cheers. All right. So that's how that works. Always a good time going in there. Uh, the guy that works there, he's a really cool guy. And uh, I just happen to work nearby, so when I'm on my lunch, I, I often see that guy and I say hello. He's really friendly. So where to now? I'm gonna take that little bit of coin that I got and go get a six pack and enjoy that tonight. So yeah, I'm not driving the Jeep because of mechanical problems with it. Uh, yeah, no, the, the engine runs great. Everything's good. The fuel pump just quit. So I have it in the garage. But I'm also doing some other work to it, so it just, it works out. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's nice to actually have it in the garage. If I'm daily driving that Jeep and then I want to make videos about it, it makes it really tough because I'll have to, like the weather's horrible right now this time of year. Uh, as I'm recording this, this is, uh, we're getting towards the end of January. And uh, yeah, this, the, the weather, like it's wet and sloppy. Uh, we get snow occasionally, but then it turns to slush on the roads and it's dirty and salty and gross. So if I'm daily driving the Jeep and I'm also trying to do repairs to make videos on the Jeep, uh, yeah, it makes it really difficult because I'll have to park the Jeep in the garage and let it drip dry until until it's, uh, it's okay to get underneath the thing and uh, be safe with my camera equipment uh, actually rolling underneath the thing. If, um, if I had to do like an engine repair or something like that, it might might not be so terrible because then I'd, at least I'd be over top of it. But yeah, no, it makes it it makes it really difficult. So having the Jeep off the road currently makes it good because there's a, a number of things that I wanted to do. Uh, there's a few upgrades that you guys will see coming up on the on the main channel. Uh, that engine swap's probably not going to happen for a while, which. Uh, which is fine because that four liter runs great after doing the head gasket on it. It does have a lot of kilometers on it, <laughs> the V8 that I'm putting in, but yeah, I'm gonna rebuild that V8 before putting it in. Yeah, a lot of kilometerage. Wow, these people really know how to manage a parking lot. Great, pile up in, into the corner. That's fantastic. See, this guy's a nice guy. Thank you, sir. It's uh, me first in the gimme gimme's in this parking lot. And here we are. And I'll see you guys in a minute. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the Jeep is currently off the road. So you you might be asking, Clyde, what are you driving then? What is that? This is a Honda Element, uh, 2008. 
This is my family car, hence the baby seat. It is actually a nice, nice little car. It's reliable and, well, it's reliable. <laughs> it drives pretty nice. And that's how you take empty beer cans and turn them into full beer cans. So what I'm doing is I'm filming my, I'm filming this on my cell phone. I have a, an iPhone 6. And it's funny because I never considered this until a friend of mine, Robert, had mentioned that he'll take his phone and strap it to his rear view mirror. And that's how he, sh <laughs> and that's how he shoots his videos. <laughs> If he goes four by fouring or whatever, he'll uh, yeah, he'll just strap his phone to his rearview mirror, and it. Uh, when I was when I was talking to him and he mentioned that, I thought, wow, I'm I'm constantly trying to do different things with uh, with filming and trying to get interesting angles and whatnot, and he tells me, yeah, I grab some of my daughter's hair bands, and tie my phone up onto my rear view mirror. Why did I never think of that? I mean, <laughs> so Robert, big shout out to you because that is just a fantastic idea. And now I am home. I am home. So I think I'm gonna go enjoy a couple of these. All right, here we go. These are all my decoys. So if you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling generous, hit that like button. And if you wanna be part of the conversation, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.